Well, hello everyone. Laser Dave here again for our third Thursday educational training course seminar. Um, welcome everyone. For those of you who haven't seen the, these seminars, these are a great seminar for an educational purpose. Today's seminar is on broaden your product line with laser accessories. Um, we're going to cover an educational training of why you would need accessories, when you would use them, um, and what accessories can benefit your application, product, material, um, and, and really a lot of information on exactly how to use them, why, and again, why you would need them and how you would need them. So let's get going here. Uh, if you have any questions, please post those questions on. Um, and at the end of the course, I have Daryl Stevens. Um, he is one of our uh, sales managers from here in Arizona with me, uh, and we will answer all of your questions that you have today. So let's go ahead and move to my screen and we'll get going. So again, broaden your product line with laser accessories is the course today. This is a course to not necessarily really, it's not a sales course, if you will. It's more of a course on exactly why you would need an accessory. A lot of people will have that rotary on the shelf and they don't know when to use it or why to use it, or maybe the rotary, but you know, maybe a different lens, uh, maybe a different feature and accessory that you don't typically know when the best time to use it or if it should be needed, or maybe even you don't know the applications that it could benefit you. So this course today is gonna kind of cover a little bit about what they're used for, when they're used, and how to best benefit by using specific accessories with your Trotec laser system. Um, like before, if you've ever joined one of my courses before, we use QR codes. QR codes are a simple, easy, fast method to take you to web pages, links to download uh, digital design files, as well as maybe locations to uh, web, uh, videos and other type of stuff like that. If you're not familiar with QR codes, just have your phone handy or mobile device handy, open up your camera app, point it at the QR code, and then a link will show on your screen. Select that link to be taken to web pages, photos, videos, or de digital downloads of design files. You can then save that link on your phone, forward it to your email if you wanna send it to your, uh, to download it for uh, maybe on your computer system. Trotec is a very social company. If you wanna be kept up to date with new features, accessories, options, products, uh, training courses like this, please follow us on your favorite social media platform. We are on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Twitter. You can scan the appropriate QR code here if you would like to far follow uh, our, our uh, shop on each one of these platforms. So today I'm going to cover mainly on the Speedy series of laser system, an outline of some of the common accessories that we're gonna to cover today. We're gonna to cover the flex laser technology, lens options, which is a very, very popular topic, uh, Atmos exhaust systems, air assist, rotary, table options, vision, and I'm gonna cover our new Ruby software today. So the overall course today is specific to more of our speedy laser series, or laser accessories. And so it's not gonna get as much into the Galvo systems. We will touch a few, few topics and stuff on our SP series, but most of the topics that we're gonna cover today are on the speedy line of products. The speedy line is gonna consist of the speedy 100, 300, 360, and the 400. Some of these accessories, of course, also available on our larger flatbed systems, including our 500, 1500, 2000, 3000 uh, laser systems as well. Um, but we're gonna basically focus specifically on the speedy line of system. Um, the speedy line of systems are a kind of mid-range, high format uh, laser system to dramatically produce pr productivity, uh, improve product quality and value. Um, they broaden your range of processing capabilities and be, to meet a wide, wider range of customer needs and new markets. These are a great product line, um, definitely our most popular product line. And so that's why we're gonna cover most of that information today. So the first one is a very popular one, the flex technology. Flex technology is a technology that allows multiple wavelengths of lasers to be 
put together in, into one. Um, the industry about 10 years ago really started to shift because a CO2 laser will support about 80, 85% of most materials on this planet. However, that additional 10, 15% of materials that could not be laser processed would require a fiber laser. So laser companies have evolved towards that, and the Flex is the Trotec version of that evolution. What, that, what a Flex system is, is the ability to integrate two laser sources, both CO2 and fiber laser, into one machine. Um, the two laser sources are activated alternatively um, in one job without manual changing of the laser tube, lenses, or focus, um, depending on what material you're running. So that is the benefit. And so if you have those materials that cannot be processed with a CO2, then a fiber laser typically will work with that material. But there are times when you have applications that require one or the other, and in, in, in some cases also both at the same time. The fiber or the flex technology allows that capability to happen. Two laser sources are easily assigned at a touch of a button within our job control or Ruby software to identify whether you're doing uh, materials like organic materials like woods and plastics with the CO2 and then inorganic materials like your metals and, and some plastics with the fiber laser. Um, this technology allows all CO2 laser applications, annealing, marking, and metal engraving with the, the fiber laser on the machine. And the benefit of a flex unit is that every speedy system is ready for flex. What that means is if you bought a CO2 system and you have the need to add a fiber laser to that system, your laser system, if you have a speedy line, has the ability to add or upgrade that laser system. So it'd be like doubling the capability or uh, increasing that capability to those materials that you can't normally process within the system that you already own, saving you a lot of money and expanding your capabilities within that product range or product that you already have. And so here, here is an example of where this could benefit from you. Um, simple application, um, this is one I did during my uh, woodworking, or not woodworking, but the uh, outdoors recreational seminar that I had earlier this year. Um, it is an example of where you can take a CO2 laser and engrave the handle and the fiber laser to engrave the blade, all at the same time, at the same push of a button, utilizing our 2.85 dual source flex lens. Um, we assign two different colors to the graphic, and I'm going to illustrate it here if you haven't seen this. And so this is what the file would look like if you're using both wavelengths. The black would be CO2, and the blue would be fiber laser. So in this case, I've assigned blue to be processed first, and the fiber laser will engrave the blade using the fiber laser. And then immediately it's going to jump to the CO2 laser, refocus, you can assign a focus and your power setting just by color. So the color assigns the power and the speed setting and also the wavelength. So you can say, okay, I, this, this color is going to be the blade and it's going to be wood. So I need to put the settings in for my wood settings. Um, this one is going to be the fiber laser. So it's a color blue. Um, and then you would assign settings for the blade in this case. And so a flex unit using the correct lens, um, the 2.85 flex lens, which works with both wavelengths at the same time, is hugely beneficial. And so if you're doing you know, cutlery like this, knives and blades and guns and stuff like that, that tend to have metals as well as woods or plastics and polymers, the flex fiber laser gives you that ability. In addition, you also have the ability, of course, to just put a standard fiber laser, a specialty lens just for fiber laser in, and then run directly into metals, all metals. It doesn't matter if the metal has paint clear coating on it, the fiber laser will directly mark into any metal. Um, I don't care what kind of metal that is, it will work. Fiber lasers also are hugely beneficial for marking into some plastics. Uh, where a CO2 will produce depth into plastic um, and, and some light contrast on some plastics, especially black plastics, the fiber laser will actually mark white, like a bright white white. The fiber laser actually removes pigment uh, where other plastics like ABS plastics and stuff like that, the fiber laser will turn black. Um, and so it does not matter what the actual fiber laser is. Uh, 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 I mean, it really doesn't matter what uh, 
what kind of effect that you want, it does dramatically improve the overall quality. Now, the, the contrast that you get from the fiber laser on metals will depend on the metal and then also the settings that you want. Um, you're going to get contrast. You can even do color with the fiber laser. You can do annealing effects on the fiber laser. If you are interested in a flex, um, here's a QR code. You can definitely scan um, and it'll take you a little bit more into this capabilities. Again, if you have a speedy line of laser system and it don't have a fiber laser on it, you have the ability to add this capability, expanding to another 12 to 15% more materials that your CO2 currently cannot do. Um, and really expanding your system's capability to handle those customers that have those materials that may not process properly within your CO2 laser system. And so that is the benefit. So many people uh, have continued to expand to this ability. Um, it really opens up your capabilities to your customers because you're no longer requiring them to say no. Um, it will not cut metal, just so you know. Um, the metals, again, will produce contrast depending on the type of metal, how much depth you put into the metal, um, from darker blacks to, you know, annealed colors. But it really depends on the lens you're using the type of metal to produce that contrast. Okay, moving on to lenses. Lenses are a very, very popular thing because it's like being a professional photographer versus an amateur photographer. Um, so many people will go out and just use the standard option on their, their camera system and always use the same one. Lens options, and then you'll see a professional photographer use multiple lens options. Um, and you'll wonder what's the difference. And that's the same that holds true with lasers. So you, if you really understand the different lenses and what they can do for you, it really kind of takes you that to that level of, or that next level in laser processing from being a intermediate, you know, above average laser operator to an expert, knowing when to process different options and ac accessories and when to uh, apply it to different lenses. Um, this is a lower cost accessory upgrade if you don't have additional lenses um, compared to some of the other accessories can cost a lot more. A lens is a very, very quick solution that can really expand your capabilities on some applications. And we're going to get into that. Um, the first one is really kind of understanding what a lens is, how it works. Um, there's a lot of different choices, choices here. Um, and what a lens does for you is this little chart in the upper right hand corner here that kind of explains how a lens works. All lenses, I don't care if it's a magnifying glass, binoculars, pair of eyeglasses work the same way. They take light and then they take the light and they either converge it to a point or they diverge it away from a point. Laser lenses use a convex lens. So that means the laser is gonna become in much wider, kind of like a magnifying glass is a convex lens. And then it compresses it to a spot. That spot, which is called convergence, which is where the beam becomes from wide down to a point, um, that convergence brings this spot to a focus point. And that's the key, depending on what lens, two things will change, the distance from the surface of the lens to that focus point and the tolerance. Um, the other thing that can change is how small of a spot there is. And so the smaller your spot, the greater the detail. Um, the further away and the more distance there is to that spot, you're gonna have greater tolerance. And I'm gonna explain that a little bit more why you would need that. So the difference is shorter lenses have greater greater uh, resolution and detail, further lenses will have much greater tolerance, but there is a split the difference in between as well. Sometimes you need a bit, bit of both. Determining the proper lens will de uh, determine or depend on a lot of factors. One, what laser power you have, um, the what type of laser, is it a CO2 or fiber laser, um, the type of material you're working with, uh, the degree of detail of graphic resolution that you want to achieve, um, as well as the material thickness. So if you're cutting thick material versus thin material, the lens can make a big difference. Trotec offers nine lens choices, depending on what model you have. Um, some models support all nine, others only support two or three of these different lenses. So contact us and I will give you a chart here after this uh, to really kind of show you which speedy machine works with what lens. So. This is a kind of a good understanding of when to use it. Um, you can use one lens. Some, some people will have two or three lenses um, and then others will have all nine. Um, really depend on how diverse your needs are or your applications are. So here's another chart that kind of explains the CO2 side of the lenses. Um, 
the 1.5 inch lens, two, 2.5, and four are your primary four CO2 lenses. Um, this 1.5 is going to be best used for engraving high detail. Your spot size is the smallest at about three thousandths of an inch. Uh, to give you a kind of reference, that's, the thick, that's about the thickness of a human hair. So it is an extremely small spot size. That small spot size is going to achieve better high resolution engraving of detailed photography, imagery, uh, small text, micro printing. Um, it is going to be highly beneficial for those type of applications. However, because the divergence is so steep and so that angle, it actually deviates um, very, very quickly. And so it's not a very good cutting lens. Um, and you may also notice the kind of black outline here, which looks like an hourglass. This is what lenses do. And so as you reach the focal point, and then if you go in or out of focus, the beam becomes much wider. And on something like a 1.5 inch lens, the, the lens becomes much wider quicker. And because it is so tight or the focal tolerance, as you see on the far left in the red design here, the focal tolerance is much less on a 1.5 inch lens. And so if you deviate much at all on a 1.5 inch lens, your image is gonna become blurry, fuzzy uh, very, very quickly. In addition, when you're cutting thicker materials, it's also going to produce a um, angled cut if you try to cut thicker material. So I don't recommend more than about a, an eighth of an inch when cutting with the 1.5 inch lens. The two inch lens is my favorite all around lens. It's the one that comes standard with your machine. It's the one, if you're not sure, that's the one you wanna use. Um, has a good spot size of a five thousandths of an inch beam diameter and a good focal tolerance, which means it can handle some good deviation. It's good for cutting and engraving. It's kind of your all around lens if you're not sure. Uh, 2.5 inch lens, a little bit further away. If you now need a little more tolerance, if you're trying to do a mug handle and you need clearance or engraving down inside of a, you know, a dinner plate or something, you need to clear the, the rims on it without hitting anything, especially if you're using a nozzle or a cone. Um, but yet your spot size is still small enough to where you can do decent resolution and quality. The four inch lens, uh, pretty much detail is not its thing. Um, but the benefit is high, high tolerance. It's great for cutting straight uh, lines and really thick materials like foam. It is um, ideal for handling a lot of tolerance. So if you're engraving on a, like a skateboard deck and you need to handle a lot of deviation. Um, I just did a video on, on our YouTube channel on laser engraving eggs. Um, it was an interesting little project for a will it laser pro uh, uh, seminar or, or video. And the four inch lens was ideal for engraving an ostrich egg because it can handle that much deviation plus or minus. And so that is the benefit of the different lenses. You can kind of use this chart, screen capture, it, come back to this video at any time. Of course, these videos are always recorded. Um, the link that you have, uh, you have access to it now, it will give you the link to uh, uh, watch it for the next month. And then it will be posted live or, or uh, uh, to the public after a month from, from today. So that is the four main common lenses. And here's another example of lenses of when, uh, you know, on the photograph on detail from the cutting side. And so here you can really kind of see the 1.5 inch lens on a photograph. And this is the same photo run at the same power settings on all four different lenses. 1.5 and the two both look really good. 1.5 is a bit brighter, a um, little sharper um, under a microscope. You can really see how much smaller each one of those dots are. Um, as we take that same graphic and go to the 2.5 and 4 inch lens here, you can see because that laser spot size is much larger, and this is running the exact same power setting on anodized aluminum, we have the, the image starts to become fuzzier. It's not as bright. It's not as crisp. Um, it's still a noticeable photograph, but you can truly see side by side on a photographic aspect where each lens lie and why you're able to see much better quality on a 1.5. Um, now, if I'm cutting thick material, the, the four inch lens is gonna give me a straighter cut. But on the flip side, the four inch also removes more material. So it may require more laser power to cut through those thicker materials. So I don't necessarily say use a four inch lens when cutting three quarter inch acrylic because you're now removing 12 thousandths of an inch beam diameter. I would opt for more of a two or even a 2.5 inch lens for cutting uh, material up to about three quarters of an inch because your spot size is much smaller. You do have a decent tolerance, um, but you're not removing so much material, which requires more laser power. And so understanding when you would use the lens and the tolerance of those lens 
will determine when to use them. Um, it's quick and easy to exchange a lens. I'll show you in a second. Um, but here's another chart here if you're not sure what lens your laser supports. So this is a great little chart here that basically says this lens comes standard with this machine in red. Um, and the black ones are what is available. So if you have a tr tr uh, speedy 100, you can do the 1.5, the 2, and the 2.5. And the reason it doesn't go longer is because the... Uh, the machine doesn't move, the Z axis doesn't have as much Z or height or uh, table height, so you can't move the table down to really benefit from the long lenses. Um, and as we go clear up to the Speedy 400, Speedy 400, of course, with if you have a flex unit or have a Speedy 360 flex or a Speedy 300 flex, you can use all nine lenses uh, within the laser system itself. Um, we also have what's called the clearance lens, which you may have saw on, uh, seen on the, on the first slide. A clearance lens is like a two-inch CL. That just means that it's the, the lens is positioned in a different location, so it produces a uh, little further distance away from the material, but it has the same spot size as a two-inch lens. So if you don't want to go down in detail, but you need to get a bit further away, you can do with like a two-inch clearance lens, um, and it kind of gives you the, the, bend, the, the distance of a 2.5-inch lens with the spot size of a two-inch lens. So if you're not familiar with what lens you may need, contact your, your local salesperson and they will help guide you in uh, this or you feel free to answer, ask any questions to me or Daryl here at the end of the course and we will answer them as well. Um, to exchange the lenses on the Speedy 300, 360 and 400, it's very simple. Just screw the little pod out, exchange the lens, stick it in. Um, the 1.5 in the clearance lens would, would be on the other direction. You would screw that little panel out and turn it around and then uh, put, place it on the bottom. Um, so it's a quick and easy method to check your lens, check your optics, make sure they're clean, um, and then as well as uh, exchange it from one lens to the next. You do also want to make sure that you uh, check if you change a lens to make sure you change it in the driver so that your laser, your, your software knows which lens you're using because this will tell your autofocus that you're going to the different lenses um, if you're using the autofocus. Um, or you would, of course, use the correct focus tool for each one of the lens to make sure you're focused correctly. If you want more information on lenses, um, like how to clean them, which is the best lens for application, uh, we have some really nice videos on our YouTube channel. Uh, we'll give you some tutorials on exactly how to clean them properly, as well as um, the best lens for your application. I really like this one because we use our, uh, our, our office in Austria is the one that made that. And they use a really nice, somber British voice for that one. So it's a nice one to watch. Okay, moving forward here with exhaust systems. Exhausts are, of course, absolutely necessary. I don't go too into deep detail on here, um, but uh, for those of you that may be watching this for uh, maybe looking to buy a machine, then uh, exhausts are an important accessory for a laser system. Um, exhausts are absolutely necessary and a requirement in order to run your laser because you are burning material, so those fumes need to be extracted. Trotec makes the Atmos exhaust systems. Um, Atmos exhaust systems are nice because they're they're made and owned uh, the tro or they're made by Trotec, and so they plug into your laser system. They automatically know to turn on and off. Um, they 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 link into our software automatically, uh, whether using the job control or the Ruby or our Speedmark Directmark softwares. All of our softwares link to these exhaust systems so that it actually can be turned on and off. You can identify how long they actually stay on after a job's finished to make sure they're ventilated. Um, and it's just that interconnectivity. But ultimately, an exhaust system is designed to remove the dust and gas created during the laser processing uh, of, of uh, materials. Uh, it basically filters both particulates and odors. Uh, the communication with the software is ideal. Um, the software automatically starts, so when you hit start on the laser, your exhaust starts automatically, uh, processing begins, and at the end of the job, uh, you can even identify how long it stays on afterwards, if you want it to stay on a full minute afterwards, 30 seconds, so that after it gets the fumes out, it automatically turns off and on. So definitely an ad advantage when you're using uh, a, a, an exhaust system or an Atmos exhaust system with your, uh, with your laser system. Uh, 
Um, exhausting when processing acrylic. Uh, a good exhaust system is critical to, to transport the gases and cues to avoid any type of flaming. Um, flame pollock edges, downdraft suction is ideal. But ultimately, the, the, the goal with an exhaust system is you're going to trap the evacuated gases. These are gases that are potentially harmful to your environment. The other thing that I, I, I want to touch on too is so many people will say, well, my exhaust isn't working properly. Whether you're ventilating into a filter unit like this, or even if you're ventilating outside. And this is because a lot of materials like acrylic will outgas. Um, and most of your plastics will outgas. And what that means is after you're done laser engraving or cutting and you pull it out of your laser system, fumes continue to come off of those products. And so you may feel like the exhaust may not be working properly when, when in fact all the scrap in your trash bin that you took out of your laser system is actually outgassing and those fumes come out of that. And so you want to be careful with a lot of these materials, especially your polymers and plastics, to make sure that you ventilate or take them, the uh, everything from the trash to the finished product in a very, very well ventilated area after they've come out of your laser system. Most polymers will outgas for about 24 to 36 hours. Um, and then that smell will go away, they will solidify and you won't have that problem. But if you're cutting a whole lot of acrylic, especially acrylic, because it's one of the worst, you want to make sure that it is properly ventilated. If you're in a very, very small environment, it can be dangerous from the from the uh, outgassing uh, from the finished product itself. And so um, this is why I kind of explain, I, I, I do know of a, a lot of acrylic houses that will actually take the scrap as well as the finished product and then put it under just a, a ventilating hood, kind of like you're, you'd see over a cooking range or something like that, to just keep those that outgassing away from it or place it outside um, or just in another location away from your smaller environment because of the outgassing from the material. Okay, moving on to air assist. Air assist is a kind of a, you know, a necessary but sometimes misunderstood accessory with your laser system. Um, some will use it all the time. Um, there are times that it could benefit you by not using it. Um, having it is always a good thing because if it, it does definitely benefit a lot of applications. But in other times, it can actually make your application worse. It can produce more, uh, m more residue and more detail when it may not necessarily be uh, needed. So I'm going to kind of cover what Air Assist is, what it's used for, um, and why you would need it here. Um, ultimately, Air Assist is designed to reduce flare-up during the cutting and engraving process. So, I mean, you could be engraving rubber stamps or you could be cutting thick material, um, and you're going to, especially those type of materials that tend to flare up, you are going to reduce that chance of a flare-up or a flame during these processes. Um, mainly cutting, but there are times, like I say, on rubber stamps where you also would potentially get a, 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 a quick little flare during the engraving process. And so air assist is ideal because it blasts a blast of air right down while you're cutting, um, help direct debris away from the optics, and it keeps those optics clean during that cutting and engraving process. If you have a flare up and you don't have air assist or a nozzle on, then it can actually, that flame can hit your lens. It can not only reduce the amount of laser power that you're getting when you're cutting or engraving, but it can also damage or destroy your optic. So you need to be very careful. Another thing is, is the nozzle that comes with the laser or with the air assist. You always want to use your nozzle if you have air on. It can actually damage your lens if you have air turned on and you don't have the nozzle in place. A lot of people don't understand that because what happens is you get a vortex effect. Um, and that vortex, like a tornado, if you will, kind of comes down. And if you don't have a, it comes down when you're not using the cone. And if you don't have a cone in place, what happens is it takes dust and debris and kind of pulls it in like a tornado would suck debris in. I mean, it can actually damage your lens. And so if you have air on, you need to make sure your nozzle is in place. Um, if you do not have air on, you also want to make sure you take your nozzle off because if your nozzle is in place and your air is turned off, what's going to happen is you're going to get heat starting to build up inside that nozzle and it's cool outside and it's going to take that dust and debris and it's going to pull it in because it's cool and it's hot inside this lens or this, this nozzle. So 
A rule of thumb is if the nozzle's on, air is on. If the nozzle is off, the air needs to be off. And this is going to protect your optic uh, when you're using it. Um, if you do tend to have a material that have a lot of dust and debris and stuff like that, we have a lot of different nozzles that can be used with your air assist. Um, the longer nozzles are going to be used mainly for um, like the two and a half inch lens if you need to get the air down closer. Uh, we have a, a, a wide mouth cone and we have a narrow cone as well. The wide mouth is if you don't want a lot of directed airflow. Sometimes when I'm cutting materials like acrylic, uh, if I direct it down the cut, it'll inject air into the molten plastic and that molten plastic will actually inject bubbles into it and it can actually make the edge quality look poor. But if you were to cut it with a wide mouth cone, it broadens the amount of airflow out and you get a much cleaner cut. Um, less of a chance of it blowing out flames, but it's also gonna protect your optic. And so you can intermix and interchange different nozzles based on what lens you're using. Uh, it's really simple to do that. Just, uh, just pull your table down, unscrew your nozzle, um, and then interchange to which one you want to put on a place. Um, longer one if you're doing like a 1.5 or, or I mean, I'm sorry, 2.5 inch lens, um, and then screw your nozzle back on. So I just switched from a, a, a narrow mouth cone to a wide mouth cone. Wide mouth cones also ideal for if you're doing just a lot of engraving or thin cutting as well, um, like your engravable plastics, um, your engraving plastic, like your uh, Trolleys plastics, your Romark plastics, IPA plastics. This is going to keep them from frosting as much. It's going to keep the flame down, but it's also when you use the small mouth cone with your air assist, it can actually cause your, your plastic to produce more debris and residue. And that debris and residue can be hard to clean off. Um, I actually have laser hacks online on how to clean those plastics mainly because of that. Where if you use the wide mouth cone, it reduces that because it keeps the flare from damaging the optic, but it dissipates that pressure. And so you don't get as much debris and residue when you use the correct cone with the application. Okay. So, um, so here is the difference too if, uh, if you're cutting thicker material. So this is a good example of why air assist is necessary. So I have a, a little video here. So if I click and cut with a two inch lens with a cone using air assist, you can see the difference here. I get a nice, clean, precise cut through the eighth, or in this case, it's a quarter inch or six millimeter thick piece of cherry wood. Where if I run that same one with no cone, you can see the difference. You get this like flat out flame, um, just, just that small amount of flame you saw right there was the difference between the fact that I had to clean that lens after that. So three second cut and I pulled the lens out and it was hazed. So there was a slight smoke haze on it. And that, sm that smoke haze on a lens is gonna do two things. One, it's going to reduce the amount of laser power coming out. So if you have a 80 watt laser, you're just, in two seconds, you now got a 75 watt laser. And two, that excess heat is now going into that lens and it's gonna potentially damage it over time. I mean, if it gets too bad, it can literally engrave or, or take the laser and punch a hole right through the lens. So make sure if you're seeing a little flare up like that, stop it immediately, place the cone into place um, and then cut it out. And so that's a good example of just cutting the same application with the same settings, the only difference between these two videos was one used air and one did not. Um, nozzle selection is another one. Um, really kind of understanding when to use the different nozzles if you have them. Um, these can be added to additional lenses. So if you add a 2.5 inch lens, for example, you can go with a long nozzle. So here's a good description on exactly what the nozzles are benefited by. Uh, the diameter, um, kind of where they're typically used. The short nozzle is typically used for processing, uh, the, or the short nozzle with a large hole is typically for processing acrylic, creating a beautiful flame polished edge um, because the material is not cooled down as quickly because the amount of air pressure is reduced from the size of the hole. Short nozzle is kind of the one if you're doing a lot of different cutting applications. Um, this is going to... Um, 
uh, or any type of applications that's producing a lot of smoke, especially woods or plastics that tend to flare up a lot. Rubber is another good example. Um, because of its restricted opening, the airflow is concentrated um, and, and then also directed into the kerf, blowing any emerging smoke, gas, and debris away. Long nozzle is kind of the same thing as the short uh, as the short nozzle with a small hole, except it's a little longer because uh, because the two and a half inch lens is directed away from the surface of the material a little further. So it brings that air down closer um, and does that um, and and kind of produces the same thing when using the two point five inch lens. Um, there's also nozzle selections or high pressure nozzles. Most don't understand or realize that this is even available. It's mainly used for our SP series, um, but they can also be used on our Speedy line for our Speedy 300, 360, and 400. Um, the copper nozzle is, it takes and drops the, the spots or the, the nozzle hole down in even half. And so you double your pressure that you would see on something like the, the small, small nozzle cone. Um, so this is increased as well. And so this is great. Uh, the only drawback I have with these is that if your alignment is not absolutely perfect, you could potentially see part of that energy clip the inside of this cone. So everything has to be tuned really nice for this to work, but it is outstanding. I get some really neat effects and it really blasts that air down, especially um, like I was cutting some qu quarter inch sheet stock plywood the other day and I was cutting puzzles and I, I was just getting a lot of residue on the surface and I can't really wipe it off because it was a raw wood. I switched to this, this cone and it dropped the amount of residue on the surface of that plywood by about 80%, just going from the standard small mouth cone to the high pressure nozzle because it forces that smoke down through the cut versus out, out of the top. So you get a cleaner cut. Um, this is available um, should you have these types of mach uh, the machines that support it. But uh, it is a good option if you want to special order one of these different nozzles for specific applications. Okay, the rotary. Rotary is probably the most popular um, combined with some of the cutting tables of, of an accessory. So many people will buy a rotary um, and, uh, and it is definitely a great accessory to have because it, it adds a fourth access to your laser system. Uh, right now, your most laser standard systems will support X, Y, and Z, uh, but this will also in addition allow rotary access or, or our access. And so what this is allows you to do is rotate 360 degrees around any type of cylinder, conical, um, you know, spherical type object when processing with your laser. Because um, lasers work just like, you know, magnifying glass in the sun, they're always pointing in one direction. So as you deviate in focus, you saw how the lenses can help a little bit, but you can't rotate all the way around. And that's where the rotary helps benefit you when it comes to uh, engraving all the way around of an object. So rotary engraving object is a, is a great tool for uh, add on to the machine. Different laser systems, every laser system that Trotec, flatbed laser system that Trotec makes will support a rotary from our Rayjet, uh, uh, a couple of our Rayjet ones, um, our Rayjet 50, and then all of our speedy line will support the rotary. Um, you can adjust the angle of the rotary. We can adjust the cone height of the rotary in and out. You can interchange to a roller system for certain applications, or even a three-jaw chuck can be added on to the rotary. So they're incredibly diverse components, um, and they have accessories within themselves. And so you may have the rotary, but you may find that you need a three-jaw chuck to add to the rotary because you're engraving, you know, I, I had one where they were doing dental instruments, and they needed to engrave specific graphics all the way around the anodized aluminum dental instrument. Well, a three-jaw chuck is ideal for grabbing onto that and engraving around some of the smaller intricate details. Or if you're engraving around the outside of a pen, um, it's hard to use the cones or the rollers for that. That's where the three-jaw chuck is. Where the rollers are not, I mean, you know, I had a customer doing large urns and the urns I work ideal on the rollers uh, because you can kind of set them on. It's got a little grabber that kind of holds the lip of the urn and then rotates a very, very large diameter around. Uh, where most of your mugs and cups and stuff like that work best with the cones. We have a concave and a convex cone. Uh, one that goes in, one goes out. 
um, all come standard. Um, and all you need to do is just un unscrew these cones or uh, rollers. We have uh, website videos, of course, that explain exactly how to interchange from one to the next. So you can interchange, you can expand your rotary to handle some of these different features and capabilities. Couple things to keep in mind when using a rotary attachment. Um, it's ideal for round and conical designs to engrave along the entire circumference. Um, aut it, they automatically turn the workpiece during the engraving process, ensuring that it remains in a correct position. Um, param uh, parameters are provided with within the job controller Ruby software. Um, just enter the diameter into the work pace and the, and the height of the graphic. I do suggest that you pick up a pair of digital calipers for this because the the diameter is basically just measuring the the the, the width of the cup. Um, the key is though is if it varies, you always want to measure the average or the area or location that you plan on engraving. Um, if you've got a lot of deviation, um, you just kind of have to pick the middle point because there's no way to compensate or change that. Because this diameter is going to do a couple different things. It's going to tell the laser system how big the page is, so how big of an area you can engrave. And it's also going to tell the laser system how fast or slow to rotate. So if you've got a very large urn that's, you know, 15 inches in diameter, it's going to rotate much slower knowing that the diameter is different. Um, or it's going to rotate much faster in, in its speed because it knows the outer diameter is much faster. Where if you've got a small pen, for example, um, that it's going to rotate much slower knowing that the diameter is much, much smaller. So the diameter that you place in is very, very important. Um, so your graphic looks correct. It doesn't skew it or scale it looking properly. Um, and also the rotation factor works fi fine. So make sure you don't just guesstimate. Uh, make sure that you use a pair of calipers and measure the actual graphic uh, at the location that you're planning on engraving as much of an average as you can find with a pair of calipers. Place that in when you go to print to your laser system um, and then run and then go ahead and run it with confidence. Um, the rotary attachments that we covered in the quick video, here's some, some kind of details on that. Um, tiltable rotary attachment. The, the other nice thing about I, I love about the, the Trotec rotaries over other brands I've used is that they have a spring-loaded tension quick release on them too. So kind of one, once you get the rotary set right, you can actually just grab the cone on the, the left side or the furthest side from the motor and just pull it backwards and it's going to spring tension out your product and you can snap in another one. This is a benefit feature because it's it saves how much time that laser is down as you're running multiple products. Um, it is great for that aspect. Um, rotary attachment with rollers is great. Like I say, big urns or if you're etching on uh, engraving, you can use them for glasses, you can use them for cups. A lot of people like to use the rollers uh, because it just kind of sits up there. Um, also larger diameters. I mean, you can interchange back and forth. It takes about 10 minutes to interchange between the rollers to the cone. So it's not something that can be done really quickly, uh, where something like the different cones or the three-jaw chuck can all, it take, you know, 20, 30 seconds. It's much quicker to exchange. So don't expect to, you know, interchange between the cone and the rollers, you know, several times in the day. Um, it's something to where you, if you have a project, set it all up, get it going, um, and then jump back and forth. But they are capable of running um, both uh, within the same day, uh, interchanging between them. The tiltable capability also on there. There's a gauge on the left side. You can kind of tilt it up. Um, just use a level on the surface of the rotary uh, so that you can get that uh, workpiece height and compensate for that angle of the glass. And so here's a good example of you've got a really tapered glass. Um, I would measure the area or the location that I plan on engraving, and that would be the diameter. Um, and the other thing you kind of want to stay away from is like graphics with like circles on it, uh, because they may start to skew when you have a deviated uh, focus point. Uh, so the, the diameter varies in this case. And so uh, that can be difficult. But the rotation factor or the, the tilt adjustments is ideal because you can tilt it up, place a level on the surface, and then uh, be confident that your focus point is going to be consistent as you're engraving around it. 
Um, the, where the cones are probably the most popular, the cones give you the ability to kind of grab on both sides. Um, some people will buy two sets of cones. Um, if you're doing a lot of rotary work, I do suggest buying a second set because there's some applications of materials. I like to use two concave cones. Uh, other ones, I like to use a convex cone. Uh, the convex is the is the one that sticks out, uh, the one here closest to the motor side, and the concave is the one that kind of goes in. Um, some applications, some materials, uh, I, I will interchange. And so a second set is ideal for that um, if you're doing a lot of uh, varying uh, road, uh, rotary type applications. Um, and you'll find that um, uh, having a second set is ideal in those cases. Um, ideal for items uh, up, up to 10 inches in diameter on the Speedy 400. Uh, can better accommodate protrusions, handles, and objects, which is nice too because the cones kind of grab on both sides like a lathe would grab. Um, and so I would say about 80% of all applications will use the cones. Um, that is the most popular feature when it comes to the rotary. Um, so the spring-loaded aspect, it works on it as well. Um, the, now the other thing is, is the, um, the diameter is going to vary based on what laser machine you, you can handle. And also the size of the rotary can vary. So if you have a much larger laser, you're going to have a much larger rotary. Um, you're going to be able to handle larger diameters because the larger machines have a bigger Z axis or more Z height on your machine. Smaller machines don't have that. So that is the main limitation on what sizes can be processed on the rotary will depend more on your machine, not the rotary. So here's a, here's a quick example um, to where I used the concave convex on a large uh, vacuum insulated thermos, uh, engraving the powder coating off of the surface of the material. Um, I used the convex concave cone system, very, very simple process, spring-loaded system. Uh, the laser works beautifully. This is a nice cylinder, so there's no angle requirement. Um, but however, a lot of times on the powder coated stuff, I will like to hit it with a second pass because it, it kind of cleans that residue off because you get a lot of reflection on the metals. But the rotaries work really, really well. Um, there are, I do have a lot of laser hacks on our YouTube channel. So let's go to TrotechUSA.com uh, uh, YouTube channel and, or sorry, TrotechUSA on our YouTube channel. And uh, you can take a look at a lot of different laser hacks. Um, one of the ones that I really like too is if, if you have those applications to where it doesn't quite fit within your cone, this is a great laser hack is to use the funnels. Simple off the shelf, everyday plastic funnels. If you want that ability to extend into some uh, smaller and larger diameters, a funnel is great because it costs you two or $3. Um, Harbor Freight sells them for like three fifty dollars for this set. And it's gonna give you that ability to kind of extend the rotary's ability to some of those uh, uh, bizarre and unique ones. You can even cut them down if you need to extend your cone down a little bit for engraving like a shot glass or you saw a drumstick or a wine bottle. Just a great laser hack to improve that. And if you need a larger cone, put a bigger funnel onto it, as you can see here. So if your diameter fits over the top of the cone, very small for your bottles. So great laser hack doesn't cost you really anything at all and gives you the ability to really expend that rotary uh, uh, rotary's diameters and kind of get those strange, unique type products down into it by utilizing something as simple as a funnel. And it just pops right off um, and just extends that range of it. So great laser hack, other laser hacks on our website, uh, YouTube channel uh, for uh, working with a different rotary if you want to know more. Um, I think this is a duplicate slide on the rollers. Yes, uh, we, we did kind of cover the rollers a little bit. Um, the rollers are um, not available on the uh, Speedy 100. It can only do the cones only. That is something I forgot to mention. Um, but uh, the, the rollers are, are just one of those nice different features. Uh, I, I ha I'm, I'm lucky enough to have more than one rotary in my lab here. And I, so I just keep one rotary set with rollers and the other one set with the cones, which is nice. So just more information here. I think I've kind of uh, overdone it a little bit on the rotary. <laughs> so the combination of the rotary uh, comes, you can you can interchange. Uh, I'm gonna kind of abbreviate here. A um, few more examples here on the three jaw chuck. Uh, here's one that actually shows you with the pen in place for the three jaw chuck. The, the other thing I didn't mention is Trotec also sells three different versions of the three jaw chuck, depending on what kind of detail you're trying to achieve. 
So different, uh, like a drill chuck, manual ring chuck, and a standard three drop chuck. So you can you can expand to those different ones. Contact our sales department if you are interested in looking for um, one of these different accessories for your rotary. And here is the QR code should you want to know how to change uh, the cones to the rollers. Um, it is definitely an advantageous and it's not a simple, quick and easy process. It takes about takes about 10 minutes and it will require you actually take the, uh, the outer paneling off um, and use an Allen wrench to take that apart. And so it is a, it's not a quick change out, but it is definitely um, fast enough to where you can do within a few minutes and then be uh, up and running with a new product. Uh, great application too. We did earlier uh, this week or, or last month I, or two months ago with the uh, uh, outdoor one where we actually take three dimensional type graphics um, and then engrave them on there. So here's, here's an example using the three jaw chuck with a combination of a convex uh, um, cone because the convex cone also has a small concave cone in the kind of the center, kind of gives you that center point. Um, and then we're able to engrave, in this case, 360 degrees around the outside to put a grip pattern on the surface of a ductile. So just another example here of where you would use the um, rotary with a couple different uh, configurations. And here is a chart that kind of explains what's available on your 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 machine. Um, I mean, things like the chucks are available on every type of them, but uh, like the cones um, and some of the different diameters and the lengths will vary greatly depending on which machine you have. So if you're wanting to do a, a baseball bat on a Speedy 360, it's just not gonna fit into that rotary because the machine itself is only 32 inches. Most baseball bats are about 33, 32, 35 inches. And so you would need the Speedy 400, for example, or the Speedy 500. So that is the big difference when it comes to kind of understanding what, um, what laser system works with what, and also the maximum diameter, work pace, work piece length and, uh, length and diameter and width of the product based on what machine you have. If you'd like to see the entire process step-by-step step, um, as we design a graphic, um, send it to the laser, put in the diameter, run the product to finished results, step-by-step step instruction on utilizing your rotary, go ahead and scan this QR code, which will take you to our YouTube channel, um, and it'll walk you through that step-by-step step instructional process from design process to putting in your diameter, putting it into your laser system, engraving it, pulling it out, and repeating. So this is a great walk through here. Um, it goes for several minutes. And so if you do want to learn that, if you have a rotary, you haven't used it, this is a great little YouTube video that's going to help you out. Um, and that's pretty much it for rotaries. You can get creative, get have some fun with it, um, play around with it. Like I said, I just did the one last week or it's just posted on our YouTube channel on engraving eggs. So I'm engraving 360 degrees on the outside, engraving on the eggs. And I'm also using the rotary to cut the eggs. So I'm cutting intricate shapes into the eggs. And yes, you can cut on the rotary. Um, examples would be, and I don't really have a lot of cutting examples because they're not as popular, but uh, I, I, I remember a customer doing, uh, they were doing wooden flutes and they wanted to cut all the finger holes into the actual flute, um, the wooden flute. And so they actually used the rotary to cut all the holes after, after the, the wooden tube was in, in uh, was created. So, um, or the eggshells, as I said, I was doing it, I was engraving 360 degrees around them with perfect seamless interactions all the way around the outside of an eggshell utilizing a rotary. All right, I think we thoroughly covered the rotary, um, almost too much now that I've actually presented it, uh, it seemed to be almost a little too much in depth, but uh, definitely should have uh, explained most of what key is possible with the laser system. So the next one is table options. Um, I really like the different amount of tables. I mean, I've been in this industry for 21 years. I've worked for other manufacturers um, and the Trotex table option is truly outstanding. What that means, because they have so many different choices um, and those choices give more control. Now, that more control gives more quality. Um, and so knowing what, like the lenses and knowing when to, when to use certain options, having different table choices give you the ability to do and improve upon your application quality. So the 
Trotec machines come with many different table choices. Now, not every machine, just like the rotary, supports every table, not just like the lenses, for example. So depending on your laser, uh, I will give a chart, of course, at the end, which explains which ones are available for your laser system. Pretty much if you have a speedy 360 and a 400 and up, um, you support everything. Um, the, the 300 and the 100 um, will be limited because the tables or the, the field size is smaller and the Z height is less. And so there are limiting factors on there. The first one I'm going to cover is the most popular and the most common, which is the aluminum cutting grid table. This is primarily, I pretty much leave it in all the time. Uh, you can engrave on it. You can cut on it. Um, it gives you the nice cutting grid. Um, that gives you the nice downdraft vacuum um, because we have the vacuum underneath of it. So when you cover up excess amount, it'll hold your parts down. Um, it is ideal for cutting, primarily is used for cutting materials with small parts, um, uh, you know, with smaller than, you know, three inches. They will remain flat on the position after they cut. Uh, more support points than the aluminum slat cutting tables. Um, this is, like I say, it is the most popular commonly used cutting table grid. I, I use it about 95% of the time in my machine, and it is by far the most popular, even over the standard flat re regular um, metal table. Um, if you are looking for less surface area, some people are cutting larger areas and they want less surface area. We also have a slat cutting table. These are slats that stick into the machine. You can remove them. So you can have one, two, or have the entire row of them in. So it really kind of gives you those thicker materials. Uh, if you don't want reflection points, you want to very limit the amount of uh, area that the laser um, hits those. The drawback of a cutting table is some materials, when you cut on those cutting tables, the cross member where the, the, the cutting table is and the beam hits can actually re re uh, produce what's called a flash point or a tick mark or a reflection point on the back side of your material. So the slat cutting table is ideal because they can be a play, kind of placed apart. So if you're doing very large cuts, you wanna really limit the amount of area that, or location that the, the, the product or material is sitting on it so you get a much cleaner cut. This is ideal for those type of applications. Um, and they can be taken out. Uh, you can have just one on each side to hold the product. And then when the product's finished and cutting, it just drops. Uh, or you can just kind of uh, keep them uh, separated as needed. So this is a, a great application for that. Now, if you do get a lot of reflection points onto something like the back of acrylic and you're cutting acrylic all the time, we also make an acrylic cutting grid table. Um, this is a polymer-based cutting grid. Um, the, the, the only drawback with this is it is consumable. So the laser will kind of eat into it as you're cutting over time. The benefit is that it kind of, it prevents back reflection. So if you are cutting intricate cutouts, um, you really don't want to elevate it or do other processes or it's, to, you know, the slats don't work properly because your products are too small. This is going to give you that clean cut without the need of elevation, without the, without the back reflection on the surface of the material. So um, it is an ideal one for cutting plastics where you got a lot of reflection, you're gonna see both sides or you're gonna edge light the acrylics. Um, it is, however, consumable as you wear it off. Um, you can take and flip this over and use it and kind of rotate it to use it and get more life, but it will eventually need to be re replaced as it becomes uh, kind of eaten away by the beam itself. So the other thing that I do want to uh, uh, put a, a little warning on, this is designed to cut thin acrylic. Thick acrylic, because of that extra heat from the acrylic, can potentially start this grid on fire. So you want to be very, very careful. I can sp speak from personal experience, uh, trying to cut thicker material, it did ignite on me. So I don't expect, I, I don't uh, uh, recommend anything thicker than about a quarter of an inch in thickness when it cutting, uh, when, when physically cutting through. And so this is ideal for your laminates. This is ideal for your thin acrylics, most of your more thin plastics, but anything over about a quarter of an inch, I would not use this. I would elevate it or use the other ones like the, um, the slat cutting table. So like the slats on the metal ones, we can also place acrylic into here. And so this does the same thing as the acrylic cutting table. So you play, place acrylic slats in um, and it again, it eats away as you cut on it, but you're not going to get any reflection on the back side of those materials. So if you're cutting large acrylic, um, a thicker acrylic, you don't want to run the risk of fire. Um, this is going to be your better bet for high production, large volume cutting uh, of acrylic, the, the acrylic uh, cutting table or slat cutting table. 
So this is a great option for you as well. Um, the next one is the vacuum table. So this is just like a regular metal table, but it's got lots of small little holes built into it. And those holes use the downdraft vacuum. Um, this one is only available on the 360 and the 400 and up. Um, I believe the 500 as well. Uh, but what this uh, this allows for is when you play something thin, if you're just engraving on the surface of a material that tends to like to warp up or doesn't hold flat. Um, I had somebody doing like little uh, like shapes that were on like a veneered piece of wood, but they were only engraving on it. And you stick it down on this, it holds it flat. Um, if you're just engraving, you can do very, very thin cutting. I've taken like cut fabric on this. Um, and just very, very quickly cut it. It may slightly mark the aluminum slightly, but it doesn't really hurt anything. Um, and you can also cut on it. Um, too much excess power can reflect off this table, so I don't recommend thick cutting. But thin materials like your, uh, you know, thin films and foils and fabrics and veneers, um, this is an ideal application for it. In addition to the regular cutting table, if you completely cover any extra area on the, the vector grid, the first one I showed you, the that also produces a vacuum as well the benefit of this is you don't have to cover the excess area so the excess holes because there's so, so much less surface area anything you set onto this it's just going to hold it down tight until the exhaust is pulled off and the exhaust is actually what's used to pull down onto it so that's what's producing the vacuum no additional pump or vacuum is needed to run this so here is an example of a video of running the regular vector grid with the uh, uh, with a vacuum. So here's an example of where I took some uh, transfer tape and placed it over the surface of the material. And then I placed a piece of paper. So this is great if I want to cut through thicker material, but I also will need the vacuum. As soon as I let go of this, the vacuum is just going to suck it down. The, the drawback is you need to cover any excess material, but uh, it is going to hold those materials down and give you the cutting capability. But you really need to make sure that you block off the excess area. So if you are cutting the material, I do suggest just blocking off the extra, uh, extra component of your cutting grid. Um, if you're just uh, doing like large bolts of fabric and stuff like that, maybe the vector or the, the, uh, the uh, uh, vacuum table is the better best bet to go with. And then we have our standard ferromagnetic table. Ferromagnetic table is the big metal table that comes standard with your laser. Um, this is great because it works with magnets. Um, it is a stainless steel magnetic surface that allows you to place magnets on the surface, whether to kind of use it to kind of butt up against for fixtures or to stick it onto your product and kind of hold them flat when you're engraving on it. Um, so you don't necessarily need the vacuum table. You can use some uh, neoidium neo, neo magnets, I can never say that right, uh, to hold them down or just any regular magnets to hold your product in place. Um, also, this is your standard flat table. If you're just doing flat stocks or maybe you're doing engraved plaques and stuff like that, you don't need the magnet, but this is just the standard work table for giving you that consistent engraving process. I don't recommend cutting on this type of table. Um, again, thin sheet stock and stuff on the vacuum table, you can kind of get away with, but anytime you cut on a regular table like this, that the, once the laser goes through the material, that energy has nowhere to go. And so what does it do? It reflects right back into the material on the underneath side. Um, back into the, the laser itself. And so it can damage the backside. It can just produce a bad result. It's not going to really hurt the table, but your quality of your cutting is going to be poor. So I don't recommend cutting materials on a metal table because that energy needs somewhere to go. So be, stay away from cutting. Um, this is primarily used just for engraving onto the surface of your cutting or your machine. And then the last one here is the honeycomb grid, grid table. The honeycomb is nice, little thinner cross member. So the, the metal uh, uh, vector cutting grid is a much thicker piece of aluminum, a little more durable. It doesn't bang up as easy. Honeycombs are much, much thinner, so you don't see as much reflection point on the back side of the material. But um, the honeycomb is beneficial because typically, um, if you don't want a lot of reflection point and you need a little bit smaller cut, um, it is suitable for applications that require minimal back reflections. Um, 
it is recommended to use with the vacuum table, or you can set it right on top of the other vector cutting grid table as well. So the extra power can go through. Uh, materials like the Speedy 300, um, you would set it right on top of the existing table. Um, also similar to on the, the Rayjet 50, as well as the Speedy 100. Um, if you're not sure which table works on your machine, here's a little chart for you. Um, you. As you can see, as you go up in the larger machines, they support more tables because, again, you have the larger field. Um, they were also designed and developed later. The 360 and 400 are some of our newer models. And as the newer models come out, you tend to get more of some of the features. So um, those are the, the different cutting grid tables and the different table options, depending on what machine you use, uh, as well as when you might use them. Okay, job control vision. Uh, vision is a new, it's not new, I should say. Uh, it is a, an accessory that is very beneficial um, because more companies have come out with printing capabilities to print on anything. Um, I know I have a, a, a sign shop work, uh, that works next to me in my, my, air, my, uh, my business park here that does large format printing direct UV printing onto anything. So they can print on acrylics and woods and polymers and plastics and glass and anything you can think of. Well, utilizing those printouts combined with the laser makes you a very, very, uh, makes a very powerful tool and gives you an ability that can't be done without this. And so the way this works is that vision camera is set onto the machine and the camera system works on our Speedy 300 and up. Um, so it does not work on the 100, but any if you have a Speedy 300, 360, 400, 500, you have the ability to place a camera on. That camera registers to registration points that are printed onto the object, whether it be paper like this, or if it's acrylic or wood or plastic, whatever material you want to do. Cuttable materials can then be cut with the laser. Um, and in this case, there's no bleed. So the laser uses the camera to size, scale, skew and rotate the graphic so that your digital design, when you place uh, uh, from the digital design on your screen, perfectly matches the printed design on your laser machine. Um, there's no way to do this manually. Um, in order to get that accuracy and registration perfectly, you need a camera system to do that. Um, the nice thing is, is the camera system is available uh, for upgrade on any one of our laser machines that support it, uh, starting with the 300, 360, 400, and 500, um, and even all of our SP uh, uh, laser systems as well. This is an ideal application. Um, it is a uh, it is a beautiful add-on to it, especially if you're working with sign shops or if you have printing technology. And it can be as simple as printing onto a piece of paper and then adhering that piece of paper to cardboard or adhering it to acrylic or wood, um, and then using the camera registration to uh, apply uh, the, the registration and then cut it out perfectly. Now, there is a process that the, the imagery needs to be cut correct or, or printed correctly, so you need to print registration points, little black dots. They can be no more than about a quarter of an inch uh, in order to work. Um, camera registration software is it comes with the job control. Um, it's added on. Um, it'll, uh, it, it's a built-in software, vision software that comes with our, 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 our package when you buy the camera. Um, it eliminates a need for any third-party uh, uh, companies that, that may do this type of process. Um, it's used for pre-printed materials and a variety of substrates. It's a, it's a built-in uh, feature, and once the system is set up for it, some laser systems require uh, wiring. If you don't have the wiring, it's going to be required to be done. Um, it takes about an hour. Uh, usually a tech will come in and do it if you're not set up, but it is compatible with laser systems um, that, that may not have it. Um, some of our newer systems, like our Speedy 400, are pre-wired, so all you have to do is add the camera later, um, uh, or some people will buy it with the wiring and then add the camera later as well. Um, but the, once it's put on, the camera can be taken on and off. So when you're not using the camera, two thumb screws and you remove the camera, um, and then it, it, you don't want it on all the time because it does add extra weight to your focus lens. Um, but when you are using it, you, you basically snap the, the USB camera on there. Uh, the software will automatically recognize it. Um, and then you design your graphic properly to um, uh, work with the camera system. 
Um, the way that it works is it used by contrast and lighting uh, if, uh, within the graphic. So it sees the graphic uh, with little black dots and it references to job control. Um, in the case where you take the design, you design your graphic into multiple cuts or, or files. And so most will design it in two layers or two, or two pages. So you have your print file and you have your cut file. Um, they need to overlay in some way so that they match on your design software. Then once it's designed, you then print it, whether to your UV printer, um, and then you can uh, take that and stick it in your laser. The camera registers it and gives you a perfect cut. No bleed is necessary. If you're not familiar with what bleed is, um, that's extra ink to kind of make the image look bigger than it is, and then you cut slightly on the inset. Um, so the, this is not necessary. So registration marks are pre-printed. They cannot be printed on a graphic afterwards. They all need to be printed together in order for this process to work. Now, the benefits of this is vision can really increase your profits. Um, being able to offer that print and cut ability for sign shops, point to purchase, displays. I, don't, I mean, it can be keychains uh, printed on acrylic, you know, uh, novelty type stuff, uh, pop culture type stuff is very, very popular um, in order to do that. Uh, men membrane switch, uh, switch industry, printing industry, uh, industrial clients. Uh, we, we, I mean, I've used the camera registrations for intricate cutting of a uh, PCB circuit board parts and and putting ser uh, you know cutouts on into mylars and and uh, Kapton type materials for industries and switches and printing. Uh, printing and decor is also one of them, but some of the the industrial type co clients and applications are also highly profitable. Now, uh, the other benefit is the material does not have to be straight for this for the machine to work. So you can literally just toss this in, uh, use the red dot pointer to find one registration pointer using your cursors, and then the laser system will go out and find the registration points. You can have uh, as little as two registration points and as many as you want. You can go up from there. Um, I've done up to 240 registration points. Um, and in those cases where I need that so many of them, because the camera will compensate for stretch within something like fabric. So if you have a piece of fabric and you have, you're cutting like patches out that are printed onto the fabric that are gonna be sewn onto a hat or, or garments or, or apparel, then you need more registration points. The camera's gonna go out and find them all and then it's gonna compensate every component of that drawing so that all your cutouts are gonna be right, even if it's stretched and skewed because the fabric don't wanna lay flat. Um, and that is the benefit of this. Um, it is going to save money. It's going to allow you to do that nice seamless cut on materials like fabrics and woods and plastics that can't be done any other way. Um, it does give your machine more potential, more application potential and a higher revenue. And you can definitely charge uh, considerably premiums for this ability because I would say uh, a, only a small percentage of laser operators and owners out there have this capability. And there are a lot of laser companies that don't offer this, or they don't offer it on more than one or two of their, their line of laser systems. So definitely advantage um, and, and add-on can be added to your Speedy 300, your 360, your 400, or your 500, 1500, 2000, or 3000 model laser system from Trotec. Okay, last one here, and then we're going to go into some Q&A. Um, this is our new Trotec Ruby software. Um, this is available now. You have the ability to do it. This is the wave of the future. Um, what it is is basically gives you the ability to go to a basically a web-based software. And this is the way that things are all going so that we can eliminate operating system as a requirement. Um, eventually, you'll be able to run your laser system from a tablet. Um, you can run it remotely, you know, walking around the room. You can check every laser system from one operating system or one desktop location um, and see what they're doing when they're doing it. Um, it just really, really expands it. It's also going to add the ability to basic editing. And so if you want to add some text or modify some text or add a cut line after you have sent it to the laser, the Ruby software is going to go there. And so it takes and eliminates a lot of the shortfalls that come with current graphics, uh, with current uh, uh, 
drivers uh, that run the laser system. Um, it is beta right now. It is in, in simultaneous with job control. You can use one or the other. Um, they will be supported simultaneously for several years. Um, as for how long, I don't know exactly, but um, th it is nice because you can kind of use one or the other depending on what's going to best suit you. Um, Right now, the future of seamless laser processing, it allows direct file imports. And so if you're if you don't even have a design software, you want to direct import a file and then edit it through here. Uh, theoretically, if you're doing basic, basic stuff, you don't even need a design software to work with Ruby. Um, it's going to automatically optimize your job cuts, um, Windows and Mac compatible, um, create and edit graphics and text elements within the systems. Um, know your job time before you run it. You can actually manage roles and user rights. So, so different operators can have different uh, authorities. And so they, they can have access to specific components or, or abilities within the software. Uh, more control uh, or control more lasers from one computer. So you can actually run, you know, one have one computer in a, in a workspace and theoretically run as many as you want from that workspace if you want. Um, uh, within connected the lasers on your network. Now, it doesn't allow you to access or run the start the laser remotely for safety reasons, but it does give you the ability to actually check on them um, and work with it. It also is going to work and connect with more of your third-party PLC ERP type systems. This is your automation type stuff. And so it'll communicate with your automation robots and your um, motion systems and conveyor systems and, and PLC feeding systems. And so if you want to make Automation, Ruby is definitely going to have that ability or uh, to do that. Uh, some of these features are available now. Some are being added. This is why this software is currently in be uh, beta. The other nice thing is it's going to have community uh, because it is web-based. You can share your jobs, your designs, your parameters with other lasers. Um, uh, right now, you can do you'll be able to do it with the other lasers within your same network, but eventually even with uh, other customers and other friends and stuff like that. Um, real-time notifications, but this is just, this is where the future is. The Ruby software is going to give you more ability, more control over your laser system, um, and just more seamless interactions with more devices, um, being able to check your, your laser system from, you know, your phone just to see how it's going, um, will be features that will be available over time as this software evolves. Um, basically, this is what it looks like. It's a web-based. You see the software on the screen. Um, it is a, I don't think I had this auto start. Um, basically, the way that it works is you can import a file, um, and you can import PDFs and SVGs right now. Um, there's a hot folder that is available. So if you hit save as and just save a file from Corel or Illustrator into a hot, fold, hot folder, that folder will be show up automatically in here. So it's as quick as easy as hitting print right now from a design software. And then you then have the ability to select the graphic. And now we can change colors. We can move it around. We can modify the file afterwards. You have your toolbars at the top. So the toolbar is going to give you the ability to do, you know, your file. You can import additional graphics into it. So you can have one graphic and import another one and add it to it. You can uh, add your shapes, your lines, your circles, uh, bring in a photograph, add text, undo, redo. That's a that's a big one right there because uh, job control don't have it. So once you, you, you get it the way you want it on the screen, this is basically a design screen. Um, we can change anything that we want at this point. And once we hit create job, it's kind of like going into job control at this point. So you now have our screen, our field, wherever we draw it on this screen is where it's going to engrave on the field of the laser in the same reference location. But the ad other advantages is that you have the ability to size and scale. If you want to go back to any one of them, the four little tabs at the top can kind of interchange before. I can type in dimensions. So it's got a lot of graphic capabilities. So I can type in dimensions. I can rotate indefinitely. So if I want to rotate to 22.5 degrees, I can do that. Um, I can add a cut line here after it hit, the file has been sent. Go to my pick tool, draw it in. It'll automatically snap to the center of my product or any of the four corners and sides. Um, I can position it anywhere on the field. And then once I have my file set up, this is like uh, in job control right now, I can then now add what material? What material do I want to process? So the material is over here on the right side. All we have to do is just select the material. The materials database is built in. It's also now searchable. So if you type in wood, it'll automatically show you all the woods. 
then you just select the which one you want to process. So if I select cherry wood right here, the preset is assigned. You can also modify those settings, make your own custom setting within it. Um, if I select the different power settings and quality settings, I can then control the speeds, the detail, any of the aspects of that setting if I'd like. Um, it'll then ask me if I wanna store that setting or make a new version of it. If you don't like it, you can make adjustments. And then you send it to the laser. Or in this case, I'm gonna place the red dot pointer on the surface of my cherry. And you can see the red pointer shows on the screen just like it does in job control. Snap it to that point, And now we're ready to go on that same location. So what you see is what you get, same size. And then we'll hit push to laser. It's now gonna show on the screen that it's ready to go. And then we can hit start right here. You can see the job at the bottom. I can queue as many of them up as I want. And then as soon as I push start, it'll start to running. Um, I've overlaid the video of the process. It doesn't actually show you this. Um, there's no camera inside the laser machine. But um, as you can see here, this has been time-lapsed a little bit just for uh, e easy process. But you can see the actual clock there on the right of the actual Ruby software being run. So it's that simple. It's just going to give you the ability to do basic editing. Um, it's gonna give you the ability to modify your files a lot more. It also has a lot more abilities in vector algorithms to where your cutting ability is a little smoother. Um, it, it, it performs the cut process a lot more efficiently. I find that the Ruby software tends to organize where the cuts, when they cut more efficiently than job control because they, you know, they're, they're developing it separate. There's been a lot of problems running from Windows and that's been the problem that the limiting factor in material in, in softwares like job control, you're limited to what Windows allows you to do through a print spooler. Well, by going to Ruby through a web-based driver, we're eliminating Windows. This is why Macintosh, this is why other operating systems will be available with this software because we're bypassing that. And this is why you have to direct import into this or from your design software, you would save to a what's called a hot folder. And when you hit file save as, and then you go into Ruby, the file will just show up in Ruby because the hot folder is linked to it. So you don't have to hit print. We're not using Windows Spooler printing ability at all. And so that is the benefit of Ruby. Um, I've been using it now for about a year off and on. Um, I, 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 if you are interested in it, you can definitely download it. Um, the latest version of Job Control uh, 4. I can't remember the version. The latest version that just came out has it also. So you can install it right from the latest version. Uh, no additional cost for that uh, to install that beta version and uh, start using it, start practicing with it. Um, you can interchange. You can use them both at the same time. So if you want to play with Ruby a little bit and then jump back to job control, you can use both on the laser system at the same time should you like. All right. Um, here is the kind of development of what to expect, fe features that are available now versus what's coming. Um, these are, of course, subject to change. Um, but as right now we can do direct import, um, you can create and edit graphics, have seamless idea workflows, more, uh, uh, multiple users, and it, it's available right now for the Speedy series and more and more models are being added to our, pr our product line as well. Some of the features that are coming this year in 2021, um, the ability to use like the rotary right now is not available with Ruby. Um, camera registration is not available yet. Um, those are features that will be added here shortly. Um, and so being able to add, and you can kind of see on this list, uh, uh, some of the features that will be added, and then over, over time, some of the later features as well. If you wanna know more, go ahead and scan this QR code. I'm not gonna go into every little detail. Um, it is definitely the future of laser processing. Um, and it is something to be excited about because it truly is going to give somebody, especially like myself, more control, more ability. Um, it's bypassing a lot of those problems that Windows provided that we could not get around until we went to this next step. Um, and so it is the evolution of laser design software and it is the, the direction we're going here. Um, that's it for the accessories. Um, if you are interested in the deal of the month, this month for our materials catalog, if you if you purchase Trotec design material, right now the digital print series, which is the material designed just for printing on. Um, we have a 30% off the digital design series. If you enter voucher code uh, March or MAR hyphen promo hyphen 2021 um, uh, to our uh, material page, uh, which is engraving hyphen supplies.com. 
or you can scan this QR code. Um, this is great material because if you're using print and cut, it is a thin sheet stock UV material that is designed to be printed on and then it can be cut on. So it's kind of like uh, either tro trolleys type material, plastic material that it's also printable surface, metallic, um, great material to work with. So definitely uh, a great material to work with, the print series, especially if you do have the camera registration for that. If you missed la uh, next or last month's seminar, um, very, very popular one on advanced Corel draw and laser techniques. Here's a QR code. Um, it's going to be going live on our uh, YouTube channel uh, either today or tomorrow um, so that you can have access to it. But if you scan this QR code, you can get into it now. Um, prior to that, it was not left live. Only people that, that actually... Um, uh, attended could access it up until today. So scan this QR code if you want to see a technique. I also have another one for basic Corel Draw that I, I, I launched last uh, late last year um, that goes through the basics. Um, this course, of course, will uh, give you a link to that one as well so you can see both. Um, both of them should be on our YouTube channel um, as of tomorrow. Okay, we are done. Um, Thank you so very much. We're going to go ahead and kick out here. Thank you, Corey. And uh, I'm going to bring Daryl on board here. Hi, Daryl. Hey, great job like always, Dave. Oh, thank you so much. It's nice to not to talk to, talk to somebody besides myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to go ahead. Uh, Daryl Stevens has been with us for a couple of years now. It's been a couple of years. It seems like it's been a couple of years. Yeah. Um, Daryl is one of our uh, uh, sales managers. He oversees uh, several di different uh, states of our, our sales. He's been in the laser industry for almost as long as I have, I, I think, what, close to 20 years? It's been 20 years for you? Uh, not quite, but 17. Yep. 17, yeah. Well, yeah, round it up. Well, you know, Right. <laughs> and so, yeah, Daryl's a wealth of knowledge, especially on the side of sales and really understanding the operation. He's really, uh, you know, got the skill set on Corel Draw. He, he understands lasers, technology, applications, you know, almost as well as I do, uh, if not more in some cases. So good, good advantage uh, to have him here. So uh, we're going to go ahead and post your questions now and uh, go ahead and uh, go through them and answer them. Okay, great question, Todd. Uh, can you do deep engraving using the fiber laser on the Speedy series? Um, and this is, um, I assume he meant uh, on metal, and the answer is no. Unfortunately, fiber lasers will mark into metal, but producing depth into the surface of metals with your fiber lasers is not something possible on your Speedy series. Galvo system fiber lasers using the same wavelength and wattage will produce depth because they apply the the engraving at a different angle and do cleanup passes. You can kind of sort of get, a, you know, maybe a thousandth or so depth with a, with a flatbed, but it is not an easy process and I just don't recommend it. Does the fiber laser etch the metal black? I think I did cover this, um, but it really depends, um, Timothy, it really depends on your material that you're working. Um, metal is descriptive, you know, what kind of metal. Um, I can get a black-ish. It's not pure 100% black. We can do an annealed mark on steel, stainless steel, iron, titanium, carbon-based metals. Um, if we engrave into it, it's more of a kind of a grayish brown color. Um, but if it's copper, brass, gold, silver, no, we can't really produce a black effect into some of those metals. So it depends on the metal, um, depending on what you're doing. Galvo lasers definitely work better, but uh, the, the darkness will depend on the type of metal. Any add on to that there, Daryl? Just in some of the applications on the annealing of it, if you do wipe them down with some type of uh, oil, they'll brighten up a little bit better when they are cleaned and they'll look. Oh, good idea. Great idea. Great idea. If I want to add a fiber source to my Speedy, uh, who would I contact? I'm going to throw this one to Daryl. You're going to reach out to your regional manager. Um, they have all the specifics for you and uh, pricing, time, uh, availability, and all of that on the right system. They just need to look at your specific system and make sure it's compatible. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Daryl. Oh, and I did want to mention, too, and I reminded myself now on a note, um, if you are interested in some uh, promotions we do offer on some accessories, uh, if you mention this course, 
Um, for the rest of the month, we will give you 15% off of our rotaries and our camera register, our camera system, our vision system. So you can contact Darrow uh, uh, or any of our 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 sale your salespeople in your location if you are interested in. Just mention that you saw this course, um, and then you're interested in upgrading your laser system. It is only available for our rotary as well as our camera registration or our vision systems for our laser systems for the month, just for watching this course. Okay, can you buy lenses with uh, without the metal casting for the Speedy 100? Um, I think so. Actually, the Speedy 100, the lens does not come with the metal ca casing. Um, it right. actually sits into the surface of it, and so you actually place the lens, and so the answer is yes for the Speedy 100. However, uh, the other models, Speedy 300, 360, 400, and up, require the metal casing um, unless, you buy it, unless you buy it out, uh, what you call it, uh, buy, buy it third party. Is that your experience, Daryl? Yeah, it is. And and just the effort and, and challenge of mounting those lenses in the uh, housing uh, is a significant amount of work. Agreed. Agreed. You, you got to be careful if you ever buy a loose lens or a third party lens. Um, they can be put in wrong. Um, you have to look at them and make sure they're correctly placed so that the, the, the direction of the lens is correct. Um, I've had people put them in wrong. Um, they bought them third party or they bought loose ones and put them in incorrect and you can really make a mess of things. So um, having it in the middle casing is advantageous if you can get it. Is the focal tolerance above and below the focal point from the top to the bottom of the focal area? Um, the focal tolerance works like an hourglass. If you get it at its focus point, it, it is basically at its sharpest point. If you go both in the into the material or away from the material, the beam becomes wider in the same distance. And so if you go 50 thousandths away from the material, your spot size is gonna be this about the same as if it is 50 thousandths into the material. I suggest if you are playing with focus, um, always go away just because you're not bringing your lens closer to potential contamination just for that reason. So, but yes, it isn't, think of it as an hourglass at your focus point, you can deviate plus or minus either direction will give you the same deviation from that. Is there any information on exactly how far the lens is from the material in the case you lose your depth of your focus tool? Um, the problem with that, Timothy, is that every lens is a little bit different. Um, we can give you a guideline kind of sort of of what they are, um, but my suggestion is you actually run a focal calibration process. Um, what that is, is basically we'll engrave onto a material that's sensitive like anodized aluminum. And then we'll actually adjust the Z height as we're engraving it. And you're going to see as you adjust your table height, and you can adjust the table height as it's running on board your laser system. And as it gets brighter and brighter, you're coming into focus. And then all of a sudden, it's going to get dimmer and dimmer. And so you're looking for the brightest spot. And once you get in the brightest spot, hit your pause and then adjust your new focus tool to that spot. Um, if you're not sure if it's brighter by going in or out, then lower your power. Uh, we have a procedure for this. This is what I would suggest. It's the most accurate, um, but it is, uh, I mean, it, just putting it to a number will never be as precise as actually calibrating it on your laser machine with your lens. Um, do you have any little tricks for doing that, Daryl, since you've done a lot more field work than I have? Yeah, if you need that procedure, just reach out to your regional manager uh, or service um, to calibrate your uh, uh, position. But I have had customers that at, when they received it, they have it dialed in, make them kind of a backup DAL uh, just so they have some other, you know, pieces if they lost their, fo their focal tool. But, uh, you know, again, on the 360 or 360 and above, we have the sonar, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. The other thing I would suggest, too, if you, if you, you know, have a problem losing your tool, which because they are kind of small, is when you get it, get a new one, measure it. Take a pair of calipers and measure that height and write that number down. This way when you get a new tool, you can you can literally just adjust it to the same one. I do suggest too is if you ever burn out a lens or have a problem and replace it, don't assume that it's gonna match the focus tool that you just got. Um, because every lens, like I say, is slightly different from one to the next. And so you may need to recalibrate a new lens to the, an old focus tool if that's the case. Okay, next question. How high can the cones be adjusted to? Uh, high enough to clear a mug handle? 
Um, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about the rotary, of course. Um, the, the cones can, of course, be adjusted quite high. Yes, definitely enough to handle the mug, a mug handle, um, depending on, of course, the mug. I've seen some pretty interesting mugs, especially over in Germany, uh, where it may not work. And so um, a good, good rule is to kind of measure that distance. But in most cases, yes, the answer, it will clear a mug handle when adjusting the height of the cones uh, all the way up so that it can give you a full rotation. How did you do the second pass in the reverse order? Ah, it's a great question. And a lot, uh, it's something new that um, a lot of people I don't think realize. When you go to print, when you go in to put in passes in your, in your designs or in your um, uh, job control. So if you're putting in your power and your speed settings, you can also indicate by passes. And in that same field, there is a direction. So you can change it from top to bottom or bottom to up, top. But there's a new one in there. If you've, if you've downloaded the new job control in the last year and a half, it now has a feature called top-down alternative or bottom-up alternative. And so if you're doing five passes it'll, and you have top-down alternative, it'll start at the top, go to the bottom, and then start at the bottom and go to the top, and then the top-down, and then back and forth, kind of zigzagging back and, be, uh, back and forth. Or you can start at the bottom and go back up. Um, and so you just need to turn that feature on. It's it's in the line for each one of the different colors. Uh, make sure you do. And if you don't have that, then you need to upgrade your your software uh, to the latest version within the last, I, I think, year and a half. I've, I, we've had that feature, maybe even closer to two years. Is the Chuck compatible with the SP100? You want to answer this, Daryl? Um. I'll be honest, I don't know that answer. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't mean to throw you that. Yeah, okay. I know the answer is, it is yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, the Chuck, the Chuck is available for that because um, like the, the rollers, I don't believe are available for that one, but the, uh, but the Chuck are because it just, the, the, the cone just screws off and that, that shaft screws back on. Um, I mean, I haven't done it personally on the 100 because I don't have one in my lab, but I do believe so. Um, and I'm sure somebody will let me know if I am wrong. <laughs> how can i tell if my system is uh vision ready um that's a good question for you daryl typically on your housing you're going to see to the right side there's a little connector um that has four prongs that will uh your your camera will plug into um and the other side is typically it's going to be on the 400s like you mentioned before. Yeah. New 400s are guaranteed as long as it's a newer one, newer style. Um, the other thing is, is if you're not sure, take a quick picture with your phone and send it to your salesperson. Uh, what I mean by a picture, just take a picture of your focus head. So the little head where your laser does all the work, take a snap of that, send it to your salesperson and say, Am I, can I get a camera or a vision system? Um, he, he can tell just by looking at it if it is ready. Um, and so... And the, the difference is, is how much time it's going to take to install. It's not saying that you can't put it on, but uh, it's definitely faster if it is already ready because it's plug and play. Um, if it is not, you may need, if you're not not savvy with your tools, you may need to have a tech come out and do it. Um, if you're pretty competent in your abilities, it takes about 35, 40 minutes to do. Um, and then once it's set up, it's now ready for then on. You don't need to do it again. So it would be a, a one-time install. And just like you mentioned before, it's just not available on the 100 on the speed line. Correct. Not, not available for the 100. Ruby sounds amazing. How do I get it? You should already have it, Timothy. Um, it is on the latest version of job control download. Um, 11.4, right? I think it's 11.4 has the, uh, has the Ruby built into it. And so you hit the download. There's an also in a download for Ruby within that. So you can go in and access it and run it now, uh, or you can go right to our website and download job control with the Ruby, um, and, uh, start accessing it and playing with it and give us your feedback. The other thing I didn't mention on there, if you do have any feedback, if you want to play with Ruby, um, it, uh, there is a button on there that will allow you to actually give feedback. It is still in beta. Please understand that. There are features and capabilities that it does not have that job control does. So um, if you do have feedback, if you like something, if you want to see something, 
click on the button in little three lines in the top left-hand corner, and there's a button that says uh, Submit Feedback. Um, it'll include your file if you even want it to from what you're working on. Um, and then just hit report. That'll send right to our uh, our team that is developing this software um, and give them all that feedback. And now's the time to get your features in if you want to, you know, adjustments, changes, likes, dislikes, uh, to go ahead and do that. All right, short and sweet. Only an hour and 38 minutes. <laughs> Well, I thank you, Daryl. Thank you for joining me today. Um, and I thank everyone for, for standing with uh, uh, another long seminar here. Um, and uh, stay tuned for, I think next month is uh, on industrial uh, materials. And so we're going to cover more of your uh, exotic type industrial materials next month. So thank you so much. Thank everybody for, for joining us. And uh, we'll see you next month. Thanks.